this is Toby Levine with more guidance for God's game of life. Learn the good news, find your position, win your free. Today I want to talk about the fog of war. Um, you probably all get the idea that, you know, war is this chaotic, scary, um, dangerous uh, environment. And our, our, our vision and our awareness of our own actions, of our adversaries' capabilities, of, of, of all these different things can become clouded, right? Because we can kind of go into this, when we get in really stressful situations, even if it's not literally, you know, gunfire war, we can get into this sort of tunnel vision, head down, you know, per, you know, uh, just really inward focus of concern. Me, 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 me. We don't, you know, I think most people don't mean to be selfish, but stress can put the best of us in that space if we're not careful. And so I was having a conversation with some good friends recently, and I'm gonna draw on the whiteboard right now a stick figure, and this stick figure is inside a church, okay? So you can imagine that this stick figure in church they're, they, they, they've been worshiping, singing, they're with their loved ones, they're with their community members, they're, they're reading the Bible, they're, pro, they're, they're praying. And at least for that couple of hours, all the threats of their life are, are hopefully mostly on hold, if not completely on hold. They're outside, the, the bills can wait, the job can wait, the, the, the messages and the phone and the concerns and the troubles that have to be dealt with, they're all somewhere else. And so we're, we're connected with our faith, we're connected with a higher power, we can feel a sense of, of sort of spiritual comfort, not physical comfort, spiritual comfort. This idea of, wow, I can't, how could I carry this through all the moments of, of my week and my days, right? So, to, to carry the metaphor a little bit, it, you know, it'd be a little bit like being a soldier and you're in training. You, you're, you're, you're safe, the enemy's not here, right? I mean, we're creating some realistic circumstances. Yeah, we're doing some hard work and we're, you know, we're, we're practicing shooting skills and gun handling and a lot of these other things uh, so that we can perform better in the actual war, right? But outside of it, it's a heck of a lot easier to do things well than when you actually get in it. And that's why we practice. That's why athletes practice. It's, that's what that's all about. So I'm gonna draw next to this the stick figure in the church uh, a fog cloud. Okay, and inside that fog cloud is the real field of play, whatever we do. I mean, if you're a soldier, it's literally war. If you're a police officer, it's the streets. If you're a teacher, it's the classroom. If you're a parent, it's the kitchen, right? If you're a boss, it's the office, okay? And every other situation you can imagine. But this is, this is where the physical human world plays, right? The field of play. And so, you think about that, that person, stick figure back here in church and what they want and how their heart is feeling full, they're feeling safe and at peace, and they're feeling what, what God really intends for us here on this earth. It's the way the game was actually designed. But the human trick, I mean, if we're honest, is to take that out into this field of play. I mean. Isn't that the human challenge, right? So what's in the way? Well, evil, frankly, selfishness. There are all kinds of concerns that we have that if we're not careful, can overwhelm all of those great spiritual thoughts that we have. And I get it, I think we all get it. I think we've all had moments where we're a, a better version of ourselves when we're calm, cool, collected, in a loving spirit, and then we've been in these situations where this less good version of ourselves, where we're stressed, we're angry, we're resentful, we're worried, all, all those kinds of things, right? So what do we do about it? Well, I think there are at least a couple of main areas where 
we can perform better in our own fogs of war, okay? The first one is to understand that the game of life here on earth as for humans was designed for everyone to win, okay? If we get sucked into the devil's idea of what the war is about, it can feel like it's a zero-sum game. You win, I lose. There's only so many musical chair seats, and when the music goes off, someone's going to be crying without a seat. That's how that fog of war space can feel. But have you ever heard the acronym for fear, F-E-A-R? False evidence appearing real, right? When we train ourselves such that we're so well practiced and equipped and experienced and we're in those stressful environments, we can kind of rise above the fog. We can see what's going on. We can be the calm, rational leadership voice in that space for ourselves and for others, right? And one of the biggest tools we have for this, or well, the biggest tool is faith, okay? If you believe that you are only your body and now is all that matters, and if it doesn't work out, you turn into dust and matter no longer, well, that's kind of a dark way to walk around, right? But if you believe in the grander story that there is this great afterlife and there, there are this set of rules and if I live in accordance with them, right? If I seek to be Christ-like in all of my actions, if I, if I seek to love God and love others, really dedicate myself to service, I can start to forget about all my problems and start to experience joy and satisfaction and meaning by helping others with what's going on for them. I've, I've, I've seen it in several, several movies where a young couple's about to have their first child and you know, obviously the wife's in labor pains, the doctor's there, and the husband's freaking out, right? Because as a guy, like, we want to be able to do something, we love our wife, but we're not the doctor. And so they send the husband to the kitchen to go boil water as if they're going to need hot water later. It's merely to give him something to do to feel useful, okay? And th that, is, that speaks to the anxiety to, sorry, the antidote to anxiety is contribution, it's service. If we can find a way, instead of going into our life, you know, later today or to tomorrow, into our problems and thinking only about ourselves and shift our mindset to, there's a much bigger game going on here, and I can tap into this higher power, all right? Now I have something in my own little fog of war that can help to calm me, okay? So that's the, sort of the first part. Okay, so now I'm going on to the field of play, and at least I feel a greater sense of peace about my life here, my, my faith, this higher power, the life after, right? But what if I don't actually know how to play this game? You know, what if, I, what, what if I don't know how to interact with all these humans? It's going to be harder, let's be honest, to stay in touch with my faith, right? Because I'm gonna walk onto this field and I don't really get the rules. I don't know why he or she is running this way and going that way and talking to this person but not talking to me or yelling at me. And I don't really know how I jump into this game so that I can contribute. It's going to be hard to stay calm. It's going to be hard to feel good. It's going to be hard for it to feel like this is a game I can win. And that's where I get to the second part. The physics of human interaction that I call four cross, okay? There, yes, there is this overarching game from, from, from birth to death into the afterlife, okay? Awesome story. That's the good news. But there's other good news. The, the, the other good news is that there is actually a cycle and a sequence, a four-part clockwise 
cycle and sequence. And there are four positions on the field and you were born, you're biologically hardwired to excel at one of those four positions far above the other three, okay? So what if you, what if you learned that? And what if you learned how to serve others by giving that? What if you learned how this cycle went so you could start to anticipate on the field of play, on the court, in the fog of war, where is the, as Wayne Gretzky liked to say, he would skate to where the puck was, not where it was, but where he thought it was going next. That's when we can start to play the game better because we start to see, oh, there's actually a method to this dance. There, there, there's something beautiful going on here and I can step into it and participate in it, dance with it as they say, and start to harness my own innate things. I mean, that's God's plan for us. God intends for us to all come here and succeed, to find our contribution and go through it, okay? So if we don't learn how to deal with this fog of war, we're gonna be stuck in this, oh, you know, cynicism, depression, like I said, anger, fear, just horrible emotions. And we're going to feel like victims. We're gonna feel like this is happening to us and that there was nothing we can do about it. The other side of it though is you take this leap of faith, you accept that there's a much bigger game here and you really start to internalize it. Even if you have accepted it at a high level, what if you started to really take it in deeper and deeper, okay? And then, what if you learned how this cycle and sequence, sequence works, right? And that's what I'm gonna be talking about a lot here on all these episodes, okay? So keep tuning in for that. But anyway, I wanted to talk about this idea of how do we take that spiritual us, that, that non-tangible, non-physical -physi aspect of ourselves and take it into this physical world and act and feel like we do here in this spiritual space. That's grace. That's living with grace. Hey Christians, Toby here with one more thing before you take off. You know, studying the Bible, praying, going to church, those activities help us to remember the good news throughout our daily lives. But did you know there's even more good news? There is. God designed this great game of life for everyone to win. It's supposed to work. The reason it doesn't work a lot of times is because we violate the physics that he installed into this whole system. So one of the things that we know of as believers is that God created each one of us unique, created us to come here and serve one another from some specific purpose, which begs the big question, doesn't it? What's my purpose? How do I find that purpose? Well, I spent decades trying to answer that question for myself. And in my search, I discovered this four step cycle and sequence of prosperity. And as it turns out, there are four positions in this game that are vital for society to work. And the, the even more good news is that you were born hardwired to excel at one of these four positions. All right, now when I discovered my position, it led to a series of huge breakthroughs in every aspect of my life. And I'm excited for you to have that same epiphany. All right, so to help you do that, I created a series of free videos that you can find here at fourcross.us. So look, don't let any more of that precious life slip by. Go to fourcross.us, watch the videos, learn your position, find it, and win your freedom.